straightforward farming. News and comment brought to you by FTFB. Now, straightforward farming. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Straightforward Farming Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Reed, alongside Nick McCormick, as always. Sitting here on a cold, dreary, rainy spring day. It is a little damp out there. Yeah. Moist, if you will. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So how's planting progress going? Well, we've been working pretty hard on the ark. About got it done. So, but we don't know today's world of gender neutrality i don't know if we're taking two or four or yeah two dudes we're not really <laughs> sure what we're doing there but yeah. uh, uh we, we planted a little bit but uh it's going okay yeah yeah same here got a uh, hundred acres of corn left and all the beans so still pecking away at it but it'll all come together looks like we got a good forecast coming up here now so yeah that's exactly what we're looking for and See what happens, I guess. Looks like next week I'll be complaining about it being hot. So Yeah, probably so. I'll get a slug of air conditioner calls at the shop. Yeah, they're saying what? Uh, highs in the upper 80s. And yeah. Yeah, it's... Into the 90s, possibly. Yep. So. Going to be a change of pace. Yeah. That should dry out pretty fast with 90, mile, or 90 degrees and 20 mile an hour winds. So. Yeah. Yep. Been a lot of, lot of stuff planted around here. You yeah. know. In well, the, from, sure. your, from your house north. Yeah. You, from you know, your house south, it's fairly sparse right yeah yep yeah it was just a little what little damper down there yeah yep it don't take long nowadays no, seems like it goes in pretty fast seems like it anyway yep so so what else is new anything nothing too exciting tractor finally left the other day so oh yeah i seen that, that yep. was uh that was good so what state did that go to anything local ne- nebraska 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 so yep. great family out there the fan family bought it so it's yep. going out that way, and hopefully they enjoyed it as much as I did. And so I suppose they'll know. change the name and everything. Um, I don't know. Really? I don't know. We is that I, is that common in tractor pulling? Like, if you buy a tractor that was called such and such, when the new person gets it, is it standard that you would always rename it, or is it um, not necessarily? Really? I I told them they could keep it if they wanted it. Yeah. So if I was planning on building another one, I said no. Yeah. But I'm not. So honestly, I'm I'll be a little honored if they leave it. Yeah. You know, it'll still be out there. At least then you can always identify it, you know, or your kids or whoever on down the road, you know. So if they keep it, great. If they want to change it, I totally understand. So I don't care either way. Yep. At this point, it's fine. Yep. Sure enough. Yeah. Oh, gosh. So what do you think of the current state of politics in the country? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I've I've had it up to here, Tony. I, I just can't take the dumb anymore. I just can't take the dumb. I mean, you've got a group of people that claim to be more educated than us lowly common working folk, you know, college educated to the 12th power, degree in this, degree in that. And I'm not against college, don't take it that way. But they're so smart, they can't pull down their pants and tell if they're male or female. Newsflash, if you have a wiener, you're a male. You're probably not a man necessarily, but you're a male. Yeah. You know, now this whole Roe v. Wade thing's popped up, which you know is total pandering for the midterm elections. Oh, that's all it is. Trying to get people's... To be single issue voters, and don't you again, think it's funny that these documents have never been leaked out of the Supreme Court before, but yeah, now suddenly they have on suddenly. a major issue yeah. like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, the abortion thing is is so stupid. It's it's so it's so elementary. Yeah, like to the point. I think I told you this story. We're driving past a billboard about four months ago. There's a sign. It says, "If you're pregnant, it's a baby." My son reads it. He's 10 years old. He looks at it and says, well, duh, what'd you think it was going to be a dog? Yeah. And I'm like, so I had to explain abortion to him. He's like, well, that's murder. I'm like, see, you get it. And you're 10 years yeah. old. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not yeah. hard to explain. It's not hard to figure out. Basically, people are looking for an excuse for bad decisions. Yeah, that's all it is. Let's say I've got a three-year-old and I just, you know, I lose my job. I'm down on my luck. I can't afford to raise him anymore. I'm, what, what do I do with him? Can I just pop him? No, yeah. that's murder. What's well, the same thing? Yeah. As soon as the, the conception. It's not a hard concept to grasp. Yep. These people are think they're smart, but basically they're dipshits. Yeah. 
it's not hard to. Not I, hard to I've never out. seen a group of people so wound up about not having the opportunity to kill somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just sickening, you know. Well, it's my body, my choice. What about the baby's body? What yeah. About, what about their choice? Yeah. You know. What about us and the whole mask deal? You know, yeah. that was the big. Yeah. Who raw here for the last two years? You know. Yeah. It's it, a joke. It comes down to then you got the feminazis, that you know. By gosh, the men are telling us what to do, and we're not going to have that. That's their whole reason for wanting to fight it or whatnot. Give it a freaking rest. Nothing has done yeah. more more damage to this country than than the feminist movement. Yep. You guys have worked so hard to bust your ass because men got this, and we got to have it. Newsflash, you guys can do some shit that we can't do, and that's okay. We can do some stuff that you can't do. Yeah. You guys have worked so hard, now you have to work two jobs. Yeah. Spectacular. Great plan. You were getting to be stay-at-home moms, raising kids taking care of the kids like they should have been, making meals and whatnot. Now you have to do all that shit, run them to ball games, et cetera, et cetera, and go to work. Good plan. Yeah. Keep yeah. it up. You're doing great. Uh-huh. Where's where's all the uproar? Because it's all about rights. You know, that's what they keep saying, right? Mm-hmm. Women's rights. Mm-hmm. Where's all the uproar when the Second Amendment's under attack? Yeah. You know, a, a God-given right in the Constitution. Well, yep. you know, we'll just skim over that one. Yeah. I mean, there ain't no one that need to. Yeah, you don't need that for hunting deer, Tony. Yeah. yeah. Even though the had nothing to do with hunting deer. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said. Those people, they talk and they talk and they talk, and they just get stupider the longer they talk. The more shit they bring up, the ideas just get dumber and dumber and dumber. I mean, if you go through their their basic agenda, you couldn't come up with shit that stupid if you physically tried 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. It just gets dumber and dumber and dumber. Yeah, it honestly makes you wonder if whoever's pulling the strings isn't sitting back saying, I wonder how stupid we can get on the next memo yeah just to see if these dumb bastards will buy it so yep. they try it and they do they buy it hook line and sing and they just yep. just keep going i mean you can't help but think it's not like the movie trading places where two old codgers that are billionaires yeah. have a bet going for one dollar yeah as to who can come up with the stupidest plan next to get somebody to go along with it yeah and it, you know as long as the media keeps pushing it well we just accept it because you know we're all guilty of it we're letting you know i always bitch at my dad i'm like it's you guys' fault. Like, you'd all this stupid shit happen in the 60s or whatnot, but they were so far removed from it being in the country and in, in the news, and there wasn't social media and all that. I'm like, but we're doing the same thing. We're letting even stupider shit than that happen now. Yeah. And we're not doing anything about it. Yeah. You know? You know, uh, Ryan Peter, which if you're not listening to the Bushels and Barrels podcast, you got to go listen to that. You're going to love it. Be. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's a lot of good politics, a lot of good discussion. So just Google Bushels and Barrels podcast. It'll come up on any major platform you listen to podcasts. But nonetheless, him and I were talking earlier, you know, all your big ag companies. So it's what? 2% of the population roughly are farmers. Yeah. And you got all your big ag companies, whether it's John Deere, Bayer, Corteva, all of them. They cater to this woke crowd. Yep. Yeah. And it's like, how many people that are part of this woke crowd do you actually think participate in agriculture? So yeah. why are you catering to these people? You and I don't want 90% of this shit, but they go along with it. It's like, what are you doing? I have never figured out why a bunch of those big companies in any industry, let alone agriculture, take a political stance on stupid shit. Yeah, I don't. Because you just alienated 50% one way or the other. Yeah. You know, theoretically, this country split, you know, split a third left a third right and then these so-called swing votes that's yeah. complete bullshit for the most part but let's exactly. just call it 50 50 for easy, easy math you just ran off half the people it's like when john deere comes out with these bush light cans i can assure you i will not be pur- purchasing a single john deere but bush light can not going to do it yeah. why do they want to advertise for another company and that's a long way from the woke deal but you know disney's a prime example they're going woke well now they're going broke yeah good yep. luck yeah that's and right I, and i'm laughing the whole time like why would you take a stance on that you know, uh, Michael Jordan's allegedly on record years and years and years and years ago. Why don't you take, you know, political stance on this, that, and the other? It's like, because Republicans and Democrats buy shoes. Why would I take a stance? And he's right. And he's right. Why, why would you do that? Right. You know, it's one thing if you're a privately owned company or so on and so forth. You know, you want to say something about that? Hey, knock yourself out. But these other companies, I'm like, they end up shooting themselves in the foot every time. Well, and to me, it's even different when you break it down into ag. So if Nike, Adidas, Reebok, you know, whatever, you know, there's a ton of people. You know, basically all of society, regardless of what you're doing for a living, is buying those products. Yeah. If you are a CEO of a big bank in New York City, you're not buying anything John Deere. You're not even buying a lawnmower in New York City at that point. Nope. So if you're the CEOs and shit at John Deere, why are you catering to this shit? What does it matter? Just shut up. You know, I don't understand it. I don't know why you would want to want to shove off your base clientele 
just to to quiet the squeaky wheel. And to me, I guess that's a to the point where they got you by the balls because you know you're down to what three, four major manufacturers yeah. in ag. So yeah. we can go ahead and push this agenda because it don't yeah. matter. They got to buy our product. Yep. Unless you're willing to go out and invent a new tractor line that people are just going to rant and rave over. I mean, yeah, exactly. But I, I just can't. I can't get over that. Why they do that? It just pisses me off and makes you want to take. And I'm not just picking on John. I'm just using them as an example. But they're they're guilty of it too. Yeah. They're, I mean, they whether all it's do bear it. or any yeah. of them. They but it makes you it. just want to shove all their shit in a pile and set it on fire just yeah. just for the fact that they took a stance yeah. on it. You know. Yeah. They're they're not in the business of that. I don't know why they do that. It it, it burns them every time in the yeah. long run. But like you said, the, you know the the super woke thing and and whatnot makes absolutely no sense if they know their client base in the ag industry. Yeah. Like it doesn't make you know the outside people buying some ag products maybe you know food, but those people have no they don't correlate food with ag. For yeah. the most part, it comes from the grocery store. They yeah. don't know that we're growing it out here. They just think we're spraying Roundup in everything, and we're just yeah. killing the shit out of everything. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't understand why they do that. No, it, it just don't make any sense to me whatsoever as to why you would alienate your main customer base yeah. like that. But like I say, it don't matter to them because you got to keep buying the shit. Yeah. And, yeah. But, and, you know, Ryan and I talked on the phone earlier for quite a while this evening, and it – it's no wonder we're in the shape we're in. So, and I'm just going to use myself as an example. You know, the people who listen to this know I got a big following, whether it's on TikTok, Facebook, whatever. And you know, those companies want nothing to do with me. Whether it's, and I'm not picking on John Deere. I'm talking any of them. You know, whether it's because of language or whatever. But that's what most consumers want. They don't care about the language. They want somebody that's going to call a spade a spade, not just be a yes man. But they have a problem with that because they're not going to lead me around by the nose, and that's fine. Then I don't, I'm not going to play your game either. Well, I mean, it kind of comes back to what we touched on earlier, and I don't want to flame up a huge fire here with the feminazi thing. But I'm like, it comes back to a, a lack of a lack of balls in this country. Yeah. Masculinity, stand up for what they know is right. Those guys, most of those guys in those positions, know what's right and wrong. But well, yeah, we're not gonna. We've got a huge market over here with Tony, but we're not going to do that. We're gonna we're gonna pick out some panty waste. And, and go that route because we won't offend anybody that way. You know, sure they don't they don't really represent our product, but but we're, you know they're they're they'll cause less friction, so yeah. we'll go that way. But the stupid part is, if you go look through any of my TikToks or whatever, I never talk about anything that I would call in the woke movement. No, whether, and I'm just going to give examples. If you want to talk, whether it's gay marriage or or any of that, you know, I don't no. I don't ever talk about it on TikTok. No, and. And that's fine if they don't want no part of me. I'm not. Don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here whining like, well, you know, well, nobody will sponsor me. I, I don't want to be. I don't want to be part of it. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to, somebody to be sitting here saying, well, hey, I'm giving you twenty five grand. You know, you're you're not going to be able to do that anymore. Yeah. You know, fuck you. I got freedom of speech, and I'll say what I want. Yeah, exactly. If it's John Deere case, whoever, I don't care if your field elevator is a piece of shit. Guess what? I'm going to tell my four hundred thousand dollars. It's a piece. Four hundred thousand followers. It's a piece of shit. Yeah. So, so make your product better. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody wants so, to go down that. Path. So yeah, it don't bother me in the least. Yeah, it's a strange, strange world. It's just hard to, it's hard to grow up in the '80s and look to where we are now. Like, yeah, we thought there was some dumb shit happening then. Wow. Oh, it's to the tenth power. Drop in the bucket compared to the stupid shit now. And you would almost think it would have got better over the years because you got more ways to reach massive amounts of people through social yeah. media. You would have thought, okay. This guy might have thought this way a little bit back then, but, you know, once he gets on Facebook and kind of sees the real world, it's like, well, you know, okay, maybe that's not right, you know, so yeah. you, maybe you kind of change, but it's almost like it went the other way. Yeah. And Well, for one, everybody's a badass on the internet. Oh, yeah. So, and it's pretty easy to bicker back and forth on there or whatnot. I, I don't know. I, I do find it odd. Well, odd's not the right word, but there's a drastic difference on how things are perceived on one platform versus the other. Yeah. Okay. So you know, take your TikToks for instance, your greetings, your your endings. Everybody laughs about that. That's funny on TikTok. If you did a minute amount of that on Facebook, like you get flamed. Oh, clear, yeah. clear off the platform. You want to see a ball baby platform? Go to Twitter. Oh my God, I got a Twitter account here. Well, I've had it for like five years or longer, but I've never ever done anything with it. Never posted yeah. on it. Decided to go over there here a couple weeks ago. Oh my God. It is a joke. It is like a bunch of 13-year-old girls. Yeah. I mean, I seen one guy on there who simply made a post that 
this has been the spring from hell. You know, everything he's touched has fell apart. And, and it was just an innocent post. You know, yeah. just been having a lot of trouble this spring. And, I mean, people jumped all over him. Oh, yeah, fucking cry, baby. Can't get your corn planted by April 15th. The whole fucking world's coming to you. It's like, he just made an innocent post. Shut up. Because I mean, everybody's a badass on the internet. Yeah. They would have never said that shit to him in person. No, there's no way. Or at least not back in the world we sure should live in, where sometimes you say shit, people punch you in the face. Exactly. We, we're missing a little bit of that in America yep. these days. Used to be a time where... If you lift off too much, somebody beat your ass. Yeah. And that's okay. Yep. It's okay to live in a world where you get your ass kicked for doing shit right. you shouldn't do. That's all right. Yep. So. That's why I have, out of all the platforms I've been on, TikTok has been my favorite as far as it seems like there's a lot of people on the same page in there. You've always got the guys that are throwing it, out. It is. It's, they're on the same page. And, and for the most part, everybody takes it as humor. Exactly. You know, they right. take it for, for what it's worth, meant to be funny, and go on. Right. You know. Yeah. But it seems like the the creators on TikTok ain't afraid to give it right back to you no. if you make a, a comment. And that, and that's for anybody on TikTok where yeah. the Twitter guys, you know, some of them, they'll kind of cower down or not yeah. reply or not say that. But, you know, you say something on TikTok, you better be prepared yeah, to back you, it yeah, up because guns are coming. To take the, to take the, the brunt of it. Yeah. yeah. The, the funniest thing I've seen from Twitter related the other day was one of my friends posted right after Musk bought uh, Twitter. I hope he buys Tractor House, <laughs> switches it back. I'm like, yeah. that's good and that's funny. Yeah. Like for the for the farm crowd, I've yet to see anybody that likes the new Tractor House platform. I can't yeah. believe they haven't got a mountain of oh, feedback as to how shitty that is. And why would you just leave it then? I mean, it's worthless to me. So I went round and round with with my rep on that, and if you're specifically looking for something. If you're looking for a, you know, a 8245R with between 1,200 and 1,400 hours with these tires and this option or whatever, it's probably better. But I don't think they fully understand how a lot of people use Tractor House. It's great if you're looking for that very specific item. But if you're just browsing it, looking through a range of stuff, like it sucks for that. Oh, it's you know, terrible. I, would, I just used to look for Magnums. Yeah. 7110s to 8950s. You know, find one I thought was a good deal or, you know, one I wanted, so on and so forth. It's damn near impossible now. Like, you could still do it, but it. Well, and before you could at least, you could select the price range. Yeah. And so you've kind of known in your head that, you know, a tractor with 1,200 hours is going to be worth this much and one with 8,000 is going to be worth. So you could, yeah. you could sort that out a little bit before, but they don't realize that 99% of the people scrolling Tractor House were taking a shit, doing it on their smartphone. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, you're exactly right. And that's what they were doing. You know, now they got to go in and run all this shit. And it's like, I just wanted to look at a bunch of tractors here. Now yeah. I got, now I've, now I've narrowed it down so much that all I'm doing is clicking because I had to specify that it's a 9430 deer. Well, there's only seven of them. Yeah. So now I got to back out and re-click through all this shit yep. again. You know. I mean, my guy claims it's no more clicks than it was before. And if you'll just go to your computer, I can walk you through some stuff and make it more like the old site. I'm like. Well, if it makes it like the Moore site, why wouldn't you just keep that one? Like, yeah. nobody was bitching about the way it was before. No. I thought it was perfectly fine. I had zero complaints about the way it was before. Yeah, to me, it was perfect. Click your brand, click your model, and away you go. The only thing I needed on it before was a couple more categories and certain things. Like, if you were looking for stuff that was a little weird, like, there wasn't a category for it. So, you had to figure out what category mm -hmm. it was in. Yeah. Where it really wasn't what it was, but it got lumped into this. Yeah. You know, uh, like a boom more or something, maybe mm -hmm. like those. There wasn't a category for it, I don't think. So they're they're under more kind of sort of somewhere, but you got to get to it, you know. And a lot of that stuff's like a weird brand. You don't know the name of it. Yeah, exactly. You know, so it, it's hard to it's hard to narrow by the brand because you don't know what brand it is. You know, it's not a John Deere or Case or Agco. You know, it's you know whatever it is. Yeah, but uh, most most guys aren't getting that specific now i'm not saying there's not some but most guys aren't saying well i'm looking for a 9430 with between a thousand and two thousand hours on it yeah, i mean yeah granted you're always looking for the best deal you can yeah but most guys say i'm looking for a 9430 so they click it and they start scrolling yeah. and maybe you find one with three thousand hours that's really cherry and got yeah. all the service records so you're like well i can live with that yeah exactly you know but yeah, more than anything you're just looking and scrolling and just seeing what different prices yeah. are i mean yeah I you know, it's like the catalog. Like, I love the magazine just to thumb through. But if I'm actually looking for something, I'm never going to grab the magazine no. to actually look for it. I'm looking through the magazine for fun. If I see something I like, I'll call on or I'll get on the Internet and look for the extra pictures, yeah. the better description, blah, blah, blah. 
Well, that stuff changes so fast. By the yeah. time you got the magazine, the tractor might have been gone. It's probably gone. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in today's world. I just don't understand why companies have to reinvent the wheel like that. Just leave it. Just, just I'm like, leave my it. thing was, if you said, so in my opinion, and I, tell me if I'm wrong here, but in my opinion, Tractor House was, let's say, the Kleenex of ag machinery websites. So yeah. everything gets called Kleenex, whether it's Kleenex brand or not. In my opinion, if you were going to look for it, if I told you, hey, find me a tractor on the internet, where's the first place 95% of the people were going? It was Tractor House. Yeah. Not fast line, not machine repeat, not machine not, finder, not machine finder, yeah. some of these other stuff, equipment facts, whatever. All there's, you know, there's a bajillion of them, which a bunch of them can get lumped into Tractor House now too. But they were going to Tractor House first, and then they were looking at the other stuff later. And I'm like, now they've kind of pushed it off where some of those other platforms are easier to navigate. Well, like, that's what I did. I was looking for a tractor the other day. Went to Tractor House, and I, I mean, I tried it out. I'm not saying it was a bad experience, but. That's what tripped me. I'm like, well, I ought to go to Machine Finder, you know, just to see, yeah. which, like you say, a lot of that shit gets lumped together nowadays. Yeah. But before, I would have never dreamed of going to Machine Finder. Tractor House would have been it. But I mean, I knew it was going to happen because it was already that way on Machinery Trader, and that's all one company. So I knew it was going to get blended into that, and lo and behold, it did. And I'm getting better at it. Now, at first, we're old school. Nobody likes change, you know, for the most part. So I was, you know, fussy about it initially, but, you know, it's part of the business. I got to got to use it so yeah i get i'm getting more used to it and it's probably not as bad as i pissed and moaned about originally but still like nobody was complaining about the way it was i realize you always yeah. want to constantly improve but i'm like i don't know anybody that had a problem with the way it was yeah you know? yeah because i'm the same way i'm like i said earlier i'm not saying i had a bad experience you know we're not trying to make this out like you're trying to crack into fort knox here it's not that bad no but before it was just easier yeah. i was more familiar with it and it had been that way for so long you just knew right it, what it to seems do. simple. Like I'll use a common ex- or an easy example here. Let's say I want a Kubota tractor. There's like 456 models, and I don't know any of them for the most part. But I want to look at them in this range or whatever. Well, it doesn't seem quite as easy as it was before. It's probably me just being fussy. But apparently, from what I've read on the internet, I'm not the only one that thinks it's, it's a little <laughs> harder than it was. So I've yet to see hardly any positive comments, but I've seen a shitload of negative ones. Yeah. So I think one of the few websites that hasn't changed over the years is Ag Talk. That yeah. some bitch has been the same, and that's fine. I'm not and, complaining. And don't, fine. Yeah, don't yeah. change it. Don't change it. Yeah. No, it, it's fine. Yeah. You're right, though. They haven't updated that platform in forever, and that, there's nothing wrong with that. No, it, it's if it okay. ain't broke, don't fix it. No, it's basic and leave it, and that's that's just good. I even get tired of that on, like, apps like TikTok. You know, it'll do an update, and next yeah. thing you know, you got goofy icons here, and check this out. and uh, Your iPhone updates, now the search bar's at the bottom of the page instead of the top. Yeah. If I wanted it at the bottom, I'd have moved it to the bottom. Like, it, it's not natural, you know? I've dealt with it, but I'm not thrilled about it. I mean, I realize that. I know for you IT specialists out there, there's a way I can move it back to the top. I'm too lazy to do that and probably too dumb. I just deal with it at the bottom, but it still pisses me off. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a bunch of that stuff. My dad's right. All that digital shit is always done by geeks. No offense to the geeks out there. The world's got to have them. But if they just get two real-world guys to, to just give them a little bit of feedback, they'd have it. But they never do that. I always think that the IT guys are little brothers to engineers. Yes. You know, it's the, the whole family, that's all. their only goal is to fuck everything up in yeah. life. So one guy becomes an engineer, his little brother's an IT guy, yeah. and then it's all fucked up. Yeah. And that's what you end up with. But you know, it's like, your, it's like your monitors and your tractors, combines, and so on and so forth. For the most part, they're good. If they just had 10% of real-world, greasy-fingered farmer input, they could solve most of those problems, you know? But they don't have that, you know? Yep. So... And they should. You know, it's like on a Pro 700, when your hopper's three-quarter full, you get this one little red bar, and it flashes three-quarter. Well, if you're not looking at the monitor right then, it only flashes it for a little bit goes off. So you're just cruising along. Well, now your woolly gig lights have come on. But if it's daytime, you may not see those. And if you're working your 14-hour 14, 14 day, you know, well, then when it gets full, then the rest of the hopper kind of turns red. And you probably see that, and there's an alarm or whatever, but... It, you know, the picture looks like a kinder- kindergartner did it. Like, yeah. we could make the graphic a little better. I'm like, that. Like it looks like a Nintendo graphic. Like, yeah. we've come a long way. Like, how about some PlayStation 3 shit if we're going right. to graphics here? Like, right. we can make this a little bit better. <laughs> the one know? for the air conditioner, it'll be all extravagant. It's like, well, we didn't, we pretty much knew what that was going to do. <laughs> yeah. But the important graphics yeah. are. Yeah, yeah they are with you. And, and I hate to go going down this path, but universal symbols just piss me off. Oh, away. yeah. I get my 9370 the other day. I put new GPS in it a year or two ago. 
and it works false. That thing drives straight as a stick. I was like, shit, what do I do here? There's no words. Apparently in the digital age, like you would think in the digital age where those platforms are very e- easily manipulated, you could just pick your language. All that should be in English. I realize they pick universal symbols for different languages, but you'd think you could just tag, you know, English, North America, and then all the shit would be in English. And then we would have to have universal symbols. Like picking a guy running, I guess means you're supposed to start, but I'm like, I'm not running a fucking race here. Yeah. I just want to run my GPS, so exactly. we could just put go or run yeah. or anything here. And, you know, I, obviously, I know it's the running man. Mean, you know, it means it's time. You know, you can click it on. But, you know, and then the stupid warnings. Like, Oh, it's terrible. You got to go through 15 of those. Do you accept this? Do you accept that? Oh, you're going to plant? Some of that stuff's bad for your health. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and click OK. I don't care. Yeah. You know, and actually, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, since John Deere and a lot of these companies want to become woke now and cater to the woke crowd, I think we need to start a movement to get the rabbit and the turtle taken off the throttles. That's kind of offensive it to is. rabbits and turtles. Yes. And I'm sure the animal rights people would hate that, you know. Yes. So, yeah, we're, we have to come up with a new... Inter- In fact, maybe you and I should do that. We should come up with the new international symbols for fast and slow. Fast and slow. Yeah. But it can't be rabbits and turtles. No, yeah. I mean, there's got to be a slow rabbit and a fast turtle out there. Uh, yeah, exactly. Off yeah, I mean, what if, you, what if you got a rabbit with a broken leg? Then he's yeah. not so fast. He's only got one foot. They cut it off my keychain out Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just one of the stupidest traditions ever. Here's a lucky rabbit's foot. It wasn't that lucky for the rabbit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good point. We'll have to work on that. Yeah. I need to email the CEO of John Deere, you know, since we're going to be woke now. Yeah. Rep change that. Yeah. And you're on to something there. Yeah, these symbols, it's stupid. Well, that, it just seems like it could be so much easier. I, I get it when you're making dashes for, you know, pickup trucks or whatever, and there's a backlight comes through it, okay, you want to make the same dash for everybody. But when it's something as easy as a monitor, you can pick whatever you want it to be. Like, you can change that pretty easy in yeah. software, I would think. The part that gets me is, let's just pretend before John Deere become a big billion-dollar company and went, international you know let's just say we're, we're going to kick this back to the 1960s just for easy figure yeah never shipped anything overseas so finally somebody from russia calls and tells john Deere, hey we want 25 tractors ship them to russia okay do you honestly think they got those tractors over there and the people are like well we don't know how to drive these things you know because it's all written in english you know there's no symbols i mean come on it, well let's face it Tony. if they got a puzzle shifter that symbol on the dash for shifting that didn't make shit ex- to anybody exactly english russian didn't matter yeah <laughs> so that's what gets me it's an american company we're going to put our shit on here yeah. in english and you figure it out when it gets to your destination yeah. if you want to take a sharpie and scratch it out and write whatever you want to write that's fine and but, we're not sending any of it in metric no piss off it's going to be a going to be in standard thread by a set of wrenches yeah, I agree. It still burns my ass. Still to this day, I just ran into it in the shop the last two days. A newer piece of equipment. We're talking mid two thousands. Some of it's American, some of it's metric. That's what pisses me off. Either just go all or yeah, just all do or not. one or the other. Like yeah, you know, you, you you take this valve off, but all this all the Allen screws inside of it are English. The bolts that take the son of a bitch off are metric, but the yeah. but the stuff inside of it's English. So. You already grabbed your metric allens, but they don't fit. So you go back and get the English ones. It's like, pick one or the other. And how how does that buy. work when you're the guy at one of these companies in charge of designing this, building it, putting it together? And so the guys on the floor are like, okay, we're going to put this field elevator together. And so they start out, and is it like, is this in the budget? That, okay, we sourced a bunch of metric bolts, so you need to use these? Or, you know, how does, how does this happen where it's half metric, half English? On a piece of equipment. That just baffles me. Well, to know I, it. on this hydraulic valve, they were probably buying the pieces from somebody. That company wasn't metric. So the internals are English because they were buying those pieces. You know, they cast a little housing for it, and they bolted it to their piece with metric bolts. But the pieces internally, well, they bought those from Parker or whoever, yeah. whatever hydraulic manufacturer it was. And they're standard, so that's what they got. You know, but you see it so much of the time on that stupid engineering thing. Like, I got to think back in the day. You know, okay, if we're John Deere or International or whoever, okay, we're we're building, I'll use a prime example here, backhoes in the M-Series. They had a little trouble with the latches on those. Need a new door latch. Wouldn't the logical choice be like, well, we're part of Case IH. 
probably got a latch on like, I don't know, 19 other models that have cabs throughout the product line. Mm -hmm. Nope, we're going to design a whole new one. (laughs) Why don't we just use the one off a 2188 Magnum or take your pick. Can we can we use a common part so we don't have to reinvent the wheel on this? It means we can up our quantity of those we buy. It's all the same. It's easier to service. Dealer only has to stock one part instead of four of them. Nope, I don't think any of that goes through these guys. Back to the geek squad, and they need a, just a little bit of real-world input. If, if I told you tomorrow, hey, Tony, I want you to build XYZ and build it out of shit you've got on the farm. You're going to find common shit. You, get, yeah. you can get one trip to Napa, one trip to O'Reilly's, one trip to your welding shop. That's all you get. The rest of the shit has to come off your farm. Like, you're going to make it as common as possible yeah. with shit that you can easily find. Nope. In the engineering world, we're driving to New Zealand for this. Yeah. We're going to Alaska for that. Like, we're going to make it as complex because we're building this ultimate piece yeah. that has no common parts with anything else we make. And that's the shit that pisses me off. Yeah. God damn. It, it, it seems easier than that to me, but... I, I mean, didn't didn't IH do that back in the seventies? Like they had the four sixty six engine. Like this is a hell of an engine, tractors. Fuck it, let's put it in trucks. Yeah. So they did. They yeah. didn't go out and revamp this whole. You know, yeah. it's all, a good engine. All basically the same. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's probably why they were a successful company back in the day because they streamlined them. They, they crossed over. You know, honestly, to their credit, they had a lot of stuff that was common. If you want to put a, a front end off, you want to put a narrow front off an M on a ten sixty six, you can do it. It's not all that hard. But the problem with some of that is, and this is probably why they don't do a lot of that anymore, is that makes it very easy for the aftermarket to tool up. Mm-hmm. Makes you sense. Know, you know, if if torques never change from a 706, essentially, to a 1586, well, shit, we can knock those out. We'll make those. You know, because we've got a huge volume, a large, a large number of them, you know, whatever. Take your, take your pick on the piece. Yeah. You know, it's very easy for the aftermarket to get into that, whereas if we constantly change it, well, then the quantities are kind of low, and what do the companies care? They're just jacking the price, and you're going to pay it, and you go on. So uh, there's probably a double-edged sword. they probably got some bean counter that's figured out that they're better off to constantly change it so it doesn't become easy for other people to encringe on their market. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, it seems like a lot of that stuff could be streamlined pretty easy. And a lot of that stuff I think they change for the sake of changing. Like, how many different oil filters do we really need? Yeah, I agree. I mean, we have literally got 9,000 ways to filter oil on a – Eight liter engine, exactly. You know, I'm like, can we not pick like five? You know, for a given space, and probably call it a day. Nope, every model's got to take a different one. You know, just pick one and go on. Yeah, it, it can't be that difficult. I've even wondered that on whether it's Deer Case, whoever. You know, look at how many tractors Deer has crammed into a lineup. You know, like let's get the R series front wheel assist. It's like you got a new tractor every five horse. It's yeah. like. At what point in time do you just make four of them and just put different computer chips in them? You know, whatever you're going to do, I, you know, that's up to you, whatever. But do we really need a, a whole new tractor for every five horse or ten well, or whatever it is? Well, I've heard, and I, I don't know if there's any legitimacy to this, so don't take this as truth. But I have heard that Deere's long-term plan is they're going to make one tractor of every model, and then you buy a subscription for the horsepower that you need. So they're going to put the big components in it because they're tired of guys buying the small model and turning them up or whatever they're doing. So they're just going to make one model, and then you, today, you're, you know, for the next two months, you're running on a grain cart, so 250 horse is plenty. So you buy your 250 horse subscription. Well, now you're done with that, and you need a chisel plow or disc grip for you people that want a disc grip or whatever term we're using for today. Well, now I need 350 horse, and that's the max capacity for that tractor. So now I buy the 350 horse subscription, you know. So I think it will eventually trend that way. Yeah, and it's be all remotely done, I'm sure, you yeah. know. Yeah. I just seen that on the news the other night where over in Ukraine, mm-hmm. you know, Russia come in and pilfered all them John Deere tractors, stole a whole bunch of shit. Yeah. I don't know that it was deer or who done it, but somebody, turned them off. Somebody shut them off. <laughs> yep. So yeah. you got a whole pile of junk now. Well, it's like, you know, the big push for electric cars and whatever. What's the first thing they want to do? They want to shut all those rich billionaires in Russia or whatever, yeah. shut their Teslas off, mm-hmm. you know. Because Musk can do that. Exactly. Well, it just goes back to the control and this, that, and the other. And, you know, we're seeing it in the trucker thing now. We want to regulate your speed. Well, there'd be an uproar if they wanted to regulate car speed. But that'll come down the pike after they get the semi yeah. deal passed. Yeah. And clearly nobody's drove down the interstate where semis are running 62 and cars are trying to run 70. Yeah. That's super handy. Yeah. That's uber safe. Dipshits. No, I agree. It's a, it's a mess. And I was telling Ryan on the phone earlier. 
I honestly think, and you know, call me a conspiracy theorist, whatever. I don't care. I think a lot of this shit's by design. You know, these new motors on these tractors. You know, back in the day when our dads bought 1066s, you took it home and you ran it. I'm not saying there couldn't have been a bug somewhere or the occasional lemon tractor. Shit happens. But it is very, 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 very common to go out to John Deere now, your local store, and see six tractors in there with less than 500 hours on them, tore all apart, scattered across the shop, sensors here, this and that. I honestly think most of this shit is by design. So basically when the electric stuff gets here, you're like, I'll fucking take one. I am so sick of working on this fucking diesel piece of shit and yeah. spent $35,000 on this fucking thing, and it still don't have any power. Yeah. Give me the electric one. I, I really do. I think that's where it's going. No, I, I don't disagree there. I think that's I think that's partially true. You know, And so much of that shit never gets thoroughly tested because new models come out so often. Yeah, they, test it, they tested it, and all their test models had 1,000 hours on them, let's say. Well, that shit doesn't fail till 2,000 hours, but they don't know because they never got 2,000 hours on when yeah. they released the model. Well, we'll just fix it in the field. We'll fix this fail in the field. It'll be cheaper than continuing to develop it and missing out on the market share. Uh, and that happens a lot. Oh, I'd believe that for sure. It's it's just bullshit to spend that kind of money on a new tractor today Yeah. and the damn things in the shop. I don't, I don't, let's just call it 2,000 hours. That thing yeah. should never have to see the shop till 5,000 hours minimum, providing you didn't abuse it. What pisses me off is, okay, we've got this electronic part, and it quits. There's no moving parts in it, but it quits. That's absurd. That was the idea of electronics. It's supposed to be more dependable than mechanical, because mechanical stuff wears. But the electric shit quits. How many computers have you ever had that quit long before they were done, and there's nothing in there that moves? Yeah. How do they quit? How did it go bad? Yeah, and there's no coughing, no sputter, no nothing. You just hit the power button, and it's done. It's done. Yeah. It- yeah. We had that one day. We... We know if we quit for lunch or if we quit for the day, come out the next day. Oh, armrest controller was bad. Went bad sitting there. Had to get a new one. Had to get it programmed. You know, so on and so forth. I'm like, literally did nothing. It's not like we, you know, put jumper cables on it and hooked it to 24 volt. Or you got struck by lightning, anything like that. Nope. We just shut it off like you do at the end of the day and went to start it the next day. Bang, it's done. Yeah, ain't that something? Super handy. You know, wonderful world of electronics. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't buy that when they say, well, you know, these electronics are more dependable. And it's easier to pinpoint the problem. Hell, from what I've seen, it's it's harder. You've got so many electronics on them now, you don't even know where to start. Oh, well, that's the other thing that pisses me off on the electronics side. So, we're marginally good at controlling things electronically, but our diagnostics are light years behind the controlling. As far as I'm concerned, that thing's monitoring all this bullshit. It should know if this condition and what that is. Yeah. You know, well, it's doing this, it's doing that. It should it should point the finger as some universal symbol that says, this is it, this is it, this is it. Yeah. But the diagnostic software is a little, you know, it's Apple IIe, and you're humping out, you know, an iPad Pro with, with the actual use of the of yep. software. You know? To me, the electronics are too tedious. You know, you could take a new tractor now, back it off the semi from the factory, Damn things throwing codes won't start, won't run yeah. this and that. So you're now you're changing wiring harnesses and that will come to find all out all it was was a loose ground wire somewhere tucked underneath the cab yeah. that screwed everything up. Because we have to hide the ground wires. Yeah. Like why can't we just you know we're we're going from the engine to the frame, from the frame to the cab, from the cab to the engine. Maybe we could just put those three in a nice little area where you can see them pretty clear. And I don't know, maybe put something on them that keeps them from corroding. You know, you'd think a $400,000 tractor, that ground strap can be freaking gold as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. You know, how about something that doesn't corrode all the time and, and actually makes connection and put it where you can get it? Oh, well, there's a ground strap underneath that runs from the cab mount to the center of the transmission. Well, that's spectacular. Yeah. As soon as I get the cab off, I'll tighten that up. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it, and that's why I honestly, you can't tell me some of this ain't by design to where it is so expensive and such a pain in the ass that you're going to welcome electric shit. Well, the, the farm. and the other thing is they don't want it to last forever. Like, no. you know, if you think how old a 1066 is now, they don't want an 8245R to be running when it's that oh, old. Oh, hell no. And, I, and I'm not picking on deer. I'm just saying yeah. in, in tractors of that vintage, you know, you, you don't want them to be doing that right. 40 years down the road. I wonder what's the correlation? Because, I mean, I know it's considerably less. Let's take, you know, international back in the 70s. You know, if they were, and I'm just throwing out numbers, if they, if they built 25,000 tractors a year, you know, what would that be today? I mean, is it 5,000? I mean, it's considerably oh, I less. I mean, it's got to be. You would you would think it'd have to be way less, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I don't know what the equation there is. It's I mean, be... you had way more farmers back then. You know, I Smaller mean, more tractors, so you had to have a bunch of them. Yeah, you know, and there, like I said, there were more farmers, so they had a, you know, if every farmer had one tractor, yeah, that was a million tractors. That was a million tractors. Yeah, yeah, yeah as opposed to to where we're at now. I don't you know, know if them companies tell them numbers, you know, as far as how many tractors combines they build a I don't year. No, I'd have to look into but, that. That that's an interesting question. You know, because you got to think the acreage is less in the United States. Like we haven't broken any new ground for no quite some time. No, <laughs> you know. And, Urban expansions taking up a lot of ground, so yeah, that would be interesting to know. <clears throat> All that shit was getting done before, but you had a lot more manpower to do it and a longer window. Yeah, you know, it's mind-boggling though when you look like A and B John Deere tractors and M's and H's. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was an absolute shit pile of them things. I'm going to say it was like four hundred thousand yeah. M's or H's. I mean, it was just a, an ungodly. I mean, you think them things be set on every street corner in America still? Well, they, I mean, they were at one time. I, I think the 140 International is the most produced tractor they had. Really? They, they built that thing for decades, if I remember right. I'm not a historian of of shit that old because, frankly, it was gas and. And of course, the flip side of that is, is back then when they started building the tractor, they'd build it for ten years. Yeah, they built you it know, for a long time. They built that 140 forever. Literally forever. Now it's what five years tops. Tops, yeah. We got a new model. It's similar in a lot of ways, but yeah, but new, quote unquote. Yeah, yeah, that is crazy. It it makes you wonder. Let's just pretend you were you were an Elon Musk, and how well it would be received if you just went out and just started building tractors, but don't put so much bullshit on them. Yep. You know what I mean? There's there's always a segment of guys they'd rather pull a lever. They 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 might have you know the guy might be worth five million dollars, but he's pulled levers his whole life. He wants to pull levers still. I said you know that, what I mean? I said that for years. I still say that you could dominate the hundred horse and less market, loader tractor market, if you deleted a bunch of shit off of them. They were dependable, they had power, great hydraulics, and no electronic bullshit. Do you know anybody moving a hay bale that needs draft control? Yeah. No. Do you know anybody that's got a hundred horse or less tractor that's doing any heavy work with it. Right. No, no, not, not anywhere in the Midwest. No, they might be in some far off part of the United States. And that's great. If you are, that's your deal. And you guys got a little yeah. different deal, but nobody in our area needs no. draft control on any ever. No, for anything ever, but they damn sure don't need it on the three point barrel carrier. They've got a bail on the back. They got a bail on the loader. They didn't need draft control the whole time. They didn't need any electronic bullshit. They need the loader to go up and they needed the three point hitch to go up and they did start run and turn. That's about all they needed. If it can do those functions, they're good, you know. And your your sideline companies for a long time filled that filled that gap in, but then they got flamed for not having the creature comforts or this that and there. So then they all adapted, you know, Sirius XM radio of of every feature. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll use that for example. So they put all this electronic shit in there too to try to spruce it up, and then not, that shit doesn't work down the road. You know, when, yeah. a, you take a loader tractor on a dairy farm. That thing gets treated like, like shit. Literally, yeah. it runs in shit. It lives in shit. It's shit. Yep. It doesn't need those features. It needs to run and move every day. That's it. Yeah. I I really think if you would take one of those short line companies like that and just fill the dash and the console with buttons and twinkling lights, they don't have to do nothing. <laughs> just so it looks fancy, guys would go nuts. I mean, the, they they want all that shit on there. They don't use any of it. Yeah. But they just want a whole bun- bunch of buttons there. So when they take their selfie, they put on Snapchat. They're like, holy shit, you know, look at all that buttons. That's fancy, you know, but it don't do anything. You know, it's funny you mentioned that. You look around the cab of your tractor, okay? How many of those features do you actually use? I told Ryan on the phone tonight, I need my SCVs. Yep. Occasionally the PTO, maybe if you're grain garden, possibly. Yep. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Maybe the air conditioner, but yeah. other than that. Have you ever programmed yours to raise the implement, downshift nope. twice when you turn on the end and whatnot? Nope. I try it like six times. I can't ever get the time out right. I, I don't need that feature. I don't know what the it costs them to put that in, but I don't need it. It doesn't work that well. And I, The I, part that gets I'll me is, okay, so through this whole deal, you don't ever have to move your hand anyway. So if I'm coming yeah. up the end, I take my thumb and I downshift once and I take my finger <laughs> I and I click the button. Yeah. But now... I can just move my hand back and just push one button but, because it was so yeah, hard to do. It was so hard to push two. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, From the same generation of kids that that played Nintendo and were pecking away on Mike Tyson's punch out as, with yeah. both hands as fast as they could on A, B, A, B to get him to stand up. Yeah. But now we can't click twice. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, because that's so hard. In fact, to me, on the deers, they call that eye tech on the deers. Yeah. It's almost worse because now I have to move my hand mm-hmm. because the eye tech button it's it's back here kind of by the throttle and behind yeah. you. So it's yeah. it's almost worse. But yeah. <laughs> no, I don't use any of that shit. Never have. Never will. And some of those features, it's like huh, they're back to my universal symbols. What I have to get the book. I don't even know what the hell that button does. Mm-hmm. You know. And, and there again, I'm sure in places they're using this, but it's like I. I think some of that shit's got ride control. Yeah. The hell do I need ride control? I'm not calling anything on my 300 horse front wheel assist on the three point. I realize there's places in the world where they have three point mounted planners. Right. That's neat. And it probably doesn't cost that much to add that feature. But you and I have never used that one time, nor will we. No, never. Never going to use it. Even if I got a blade or something on it, I'm never going to use that feature. Not going to happen. And to me, so we got, well, both of our, our series, Front wheel assist. We've got an 8295R, which it's clear. It's like a 2011 model. I mean, it's got the little pipe, no emissions. It's yeah. basically an 8430 with an R series cab. And then we got an 8285R that's a 13 model. It's got a little bit of emissions, but no def, none of that bullshit. But they've all got their stupid little computer screen right there by your hydraulics and that that tells you everything about the tractor. But none of it's touch screen. So you yeah. got your stupid fucking thumb wheel. You got to scroll through and hit 45 buttons. To me, it's like, fuck your iTech one button on the end. Give me a fucking touch screen yeah. screen in this deal. I mean, it just infuriates me that somebody from John Deere thought that thing was a good idea to scroll through all that shit and push buttons. And, and some of that shit, and this has always been a bitch of mine on the combines, right? Okay, that Pro 700 is great. I got no beef with it. I have no problem with it. Other than there's not on a combine, there's not near enough tabs to scroll through all the shit you want to see. And some of that space on that screen is ate up by fuel water temp this that and the other that can be a gauge in the corner yeah that's fine where i can see it all the time no matter what screen i'm on at a quick glance and i don't have to decipher how many bars i've got that needle moving back and forth that that every car still has we didn't go to stupid bar graphs on them for the most part i'm sure there's some piece of shit car that has a bar graph but i don't care about those people just give me a little gauge package in the corner that shows my main functions water temp fuel yeah def level whatever whatever bullshit we're putting on your your main functions and then i got the whole screen to show shit i actually want to see you know rotor loss fan speed you know all that shit the shit you know yep. yield you it's either you got to pick well you can either see if the engine's going to blow up or you can see what your yield is but you can't do both yeah take exactly. your pick you're either blowing the rods out of this thing or you're throwing corn out the ass take your pick you can't do yeah. both you know <laughs> yeah one, that hard. once again i wish these companies once a year would have a a farmer field day, you know, hey, we're coming out with a new series of combines. We're going to bring in 100 farmers. Yeah. And we want you to pick, we want you guys to pick this thing apart. Tell they us probably, everything. They probably do. Turn it well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's probably right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just a simple shit like that that pisses yeah. you off. You know, God yeah. damn it, I know you got the technology to do it. Just make the screen another, what the fuck is a, another two inch taller screen on a $500,000 combine? You know, yeah. I'll pay it. I'll pay yeah. the 2500 bucks to get me a screen and show me what I need to see. Yeah, it, it can't be that hard. Or my personal favorite. We're going to mount this screen here, but the sun's going to glare out the whole time, so you probably can't see yeah. it anyway. Yeah. No way to shade. It. You could shade yourself in nine other spots except for that freaking screen. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. The, in the areas where they really think they're saving you time and money, Yeah. but in the big areas, that you know, there's nothing. It just... I'll have to go through the cabs of some of those and see how many buttons in there that I don't need. I can tell you my staggers, there's zero, basically. All, yeah. all that, because there's not a lot of extra shit in there and that's why i love those tractors but yeah in the in the later magnums there's a ton of shit and you get you know i don't have super new stuff my stuff you know mid 2000s or whatever you get into the newer stuff and I'm, i have no idea what a bunch of that shit does yeah you know? the 30 and, and, series and from what i've asked the guys that own them they don't know either yeah <laughs> no i i agree the 30 series deers were the last good simple easy tractors before they put all that shit on the armrest that you'll never use yeah. You know, they were very simple. You could find some of that stuff by scrolling through a little screen over there, but it it wasn't 500 other things that you'll never, ever look at. It was just some pretty basic stuff that it's like, well, you know, I want to I see what my slip is. So, you know, you turn yeah. your little wheel a little bit, and you'll you'll find yeah. it. But, you know, they've got, like, the voltmeter, transmission, t- you know, a bunch of shit that – how often do you fucking look at your voltmeter – in a combine, you know what I mean. I know it's there. That that might be handy in one scenario. It'd be every, neat if it was in a small little gauge pack in the corner. Yeah, like it was on a twenty one eighty eight or something. Take your screen up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it's just so stupid how they put some of that shit in there. That yeah, yeah. 
I one of my get personal it. favorite. We're not going to attach a real number to it. So it just runs in this range. My brother told me, on the edge of red ain't red. That's right. <laughs> You're good to go. <laughs> if they wanted that to be a problem, they should have made it red. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose he's right, you know. Yep, take the chain clank theory. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> they didn't want me to run it that hard. The accelerator wouldn't go that far down. <laughs> Not wrong. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It just makes me mad that they don't ever they don't ever listen to the feedback. You know, yeah. you could take 50 people on TikTok with huge followings, and they could make videos, and you'd have another 1,000 comments on all yeah. them that, yep, I agree, and they just they don't give a shit. They're like, yep. Don't care. Yeah. I don't know why you wouldn't try to at least cater to your clientele. Oh, oh I think some of that stuff, they're, you know, they run out of time. They run out of budget. They're like, oh, to hell with it. Roll with it. You know, we'll we'll worry about later. We'll fix it on the next series. Ah, we didn't get it done on that one either. Maybe next time. Yeah. But that's the thing. You know, taking our series front wheel assist. I mean, now they've really revamped them to these new ones. But the ones like that we run, they've been out for 10 years. You just keep adding more emissions. It's the only fucking thing you're changing. I yeah. mean, the cabs yeah. are the same. Everything else, you just pile more emissions on them. Yeah, so pretty much the same, you had yeah. time to fix the shit in the cab that I wanted fixed. Yeah. We didn't do it, but we thought about it. We just didn't get around to it. Yeah. It is frustrating in that regard. <clears throat> I don't know how you'd ever how you'd ever fix it. But. Yeah, we're not going to, but we're going to complain about it anyway. Because if there's one thing farmers are good at, it's complaining, Tony. They'll they'll fix them on. You wait and see. The last series of tractors all these companies make before they go fully electric with no cabs will be perfect. Everything will be great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then they'll outlaw them in like two years. Yeah, yep. no shit. Can't run them anymore. Sorry about your luck. We know you liked it, but you're out of luck. You know, look at all the features that are on a new pickup truck. Like, there's a million features on those trucks, and all that stuff's nice. But how much of the percentage of the people that are buying a Platinum or a High Country or or whatever Dodge's high-end shit is, if they have anything high-end, are you actually using most of those features? Like, probably not. Right. You know, when we were kids, it was hot as shit. Air conditioner may or may not work. You may or may not have air conditioning. So you're using the wing windows. You're using the sliding rear glass. Now it's power. And you're not sliding it open because you really don't need to breeze because your air conditioner works. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I mean, it's neat so you can hear the pipes or whatever if you got it, you know, big exhaust on it or something. But otherwise, you really need that, you know. I, there's a bunch of that shit. It's nice to have, but, you yeah. know, back when trucks had mirrors that were four foot wide made out of steel, they didn't power fold, but yet they still were fine. Yeah. Now you click a button, they power folds, and I do use my power fold mirrors, but do you really need all that shit? Like, could they sell a bunch more of those if there was a version that didn't have that? I don't know, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it makes you wonder. There's just so much shit on this stuff anymore. It just... And my brother and I were just laughing. You know, when we were kids, everything had a bench seat in a truck. But if you want to slide the seat, you got to have a buddy with you. Yeah. Because one, one guy can't slide the seat. No, exactly. gets cockeyed. Yep. <laughs> so you got to get your friend in there who's hopefully the same height as you. Otherwise, he's like, no, nah, to hell with it. I ain't sliding the seat forward. <laughs> yeah. you know? He's like, nope, nope, I like my leg room. I'm not sliding it forward. That's you right. You can't touch the pedals. I don't care. You know? Yep. <laughs> that was a team effort. <laughs> you had to group up with people your same height that wanted to ride with you so you could all be comfortable together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the good old days. <laughs> Uh, uh, I missed the wing window. Who, oh, I who didn't like to sit there and click that wing window? Yep. You know, we bought that 2015 Freightliner grain truck here a few weeks ago. That so much, you still got wings in the windows. Couldn't believe it. And I think no I'm 99 percent sure our 2013 doesn't have them. It's a full window, really? if I remember right. But yep, that 15's got them. <laughs> I know in our old dump truck. <clears throat> You want to turn the air on, you got to open the wing window. Yep. yep. <laughs> That's, those wing windows bring in a ton they of air. They do. I mean, scoops it right in. And, right you know, in. when we was kids, cars and everything had them oh, you know, back did. then. Yeah. I remember yeah. Our, we had a 77 Lincoln, had power windows. The first vehicle we ever had to have power windows, I think. And the wing window rolled down first. It Is that right? Out. It rolled down first, and then the regular window went down. No kidding. Yeah. All Completely bad. useless feature. Right. But. <laughs> Yeah. There again, back to features you don't need. It yeah. did you no good because it went straight down. It didn't wing shit. Yeah. It was just a small triangle window, and it went down first in the big window. If I remember right, that's been a long time ago, yeah. but I'm pretty sure that's was the way that, it that, that was an old gray one, wasn't it? Gray, yeah. It had yeah. a speedometer about two foot long. Yep. And it turned from black to white or white to black. If you got going fast enough, it went from zero to 80. If you got going fast enough, it'd come back around and start changing back the other color. Is that right? Yeah. Huh. It had a 460 in it. No kidding. Yeah. I'll be damned. Yeah. Thing had four foot of steel in every direction. Yep. 
Yeah. yeah, when we was kids, there was an ashtray every three feet in a car. I mean, yeah. you didn't have to. I mean, they yeah. had them in the doors, the seat, the backs of the yeah. front seats. They were everywhere. Everywhere, you could fit a circus in there. Like there was enough for two people to lay in the rear window. Yeah, you know, the back seat held four. <laughs> yeah, the front seat folded down into what well, you could fit four up front. Like yeah, uh-huh. and it always kills me. You get these guys now that are, you know, let's call them sixty years old, and they'll buy. The shortest length truck they can get, you know. Yeah. God damn, I don't want no crew cab long bed. You know, long so much, can't get it nowhere. But you used to drive a Lincoln Continental that was three <laughs> times <Yeah>. longer. <laughs> Got around just fine. Yeah. I look at my parents' garage, and I'm like, how in the hell did we get that thing in there? Yeah. You know, like, say it was four foot of steel in every direction. Yeah. It's funny when you get them old cars and you look out through that hood. I mean, that hood seems like it's a mile long. Yeah, I mean, mile crazy. long, and you had room for three years worth of groceries in the trunk. Yeah. You know, you could put a couple of bodies. It, it yeah. makes you wonder in a sense, how people actually did get killed in car wrecks back then. I mean, you had, like you say, you had fucking steel for miles in every direction. Well, but, they didn't really crunch in the places they right, needed to they, crunch. You know, no, no airbags. airbags and, yeah. and shit, if you get, I don't know, when did the, the shoulder strap come in on the seat belts? You know, because some of them older vehicles were just a lap belt. I mean, My which, scouts just got lap belts. Which basically catapulted you into the steering wheel. <laughs> I mean, just folded you over and shoved you into it, yeah. yeah. I think that Lincoln had had shoulder belts but the mike said my scouts the 79 it's just got lap belts yeah and uh, any car up till probably what 1990 the back seats were lap belts for yeah, sure you know the whole yeah, back seat uh, yeah, but which got. now yeah. i think it's damn near a five-point harness on everything yeah. i mean i'm not yeah. saying that's a bad thing but i mean it, yeah <clears throat> well with airbags you pretty much got to be in the right spot or the airbag is going to do more damage than the wreck yeah than for that, sure you know yeah yeah it's funny you know if you'll ever look back through old newspaper clippings You'll see that, you know, so and so got killed in a car wreck, and they'll have a picture of the car, you know, back when they used to do that. And you're yeah. like, that car don't really look that bad. Yeah. But it, like you say, they. But he, but he got his head beat into a steel dash. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> the steering column was basically a javelin. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was but a lot of. My little fender bender didn't do much. No, it didn't. <laughs> My niece got backed into school, and she drives an 88 Ford diesel. Yep. And somebody backed into her in a pretty new Duramax. Did a substantial amount of damage to the new Duramax. Broke the turn signal on the on the old No kidding. <laughs> oh, I bet your brother was sick. I mean, that was your dad's good truck. No, 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 it wasn't a good truck. It's, oh, okay. it's this little brown one that he got for. Oh, okay. But it, uh, he, he's like, damn, I just bought those turn signals. <laughs> he bought new LED assemblies for them or whatnot, you know, reproduction ones or whatever. He's like, I just bought those. I'm like, yeah. Here's fifty bucks. You know, you can probably buy another set. But, yeah. but yeah, apparently it it did some su- substantial damage to that newer truck. I'm like, I'll yeah, be damned. That's the difference between steel and not steel. Yep. Which I guess it does make more sense when you talk about a sudden impact like that, where the car just crumples and absorbs yeah, it absorbs versus it. bouncing off. I mean, yeah. when you're running sixty mile an hour and you bounce the other direction, yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. gonna get hurt. No doubt. But, you know, that's why they always said, you know, NASCARs were actually made to crumple yeah. and come apart because it's absorbing the energy as, it, yeah, as, as it it's goes. doing it. Yeah. Makes sense. But, yeah, there was some hellacious vehicles back then. Yeah, absolutely. When you were pissed off at a girl, you didn't just go punch a dent in the side of your truck because it, it wasn't going to work too well. <laughs> no, you're going to go to the doctor for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're going to need a new fist for that. I don't know how many friends we had growing up break up with their girlfriends. They go beat the hell out of their vehicle. I, I never did understand yeah. that. I'm like... Well, your vehicle didn't do anything wrong. Of course, I'm one of those guys. I'm more like the guys on, uh, oh, what's the movie with John Travolta? Uh, well, uh, Urban Bruce, Bruce Willis is in it with a yeah, he's a pulp, box, he's pulp, a box, fi- pulp, pulp fiction. fiction. You never screw with another man's vehicle or whatnot. Mm. Like I, I take a lot of pride in yeah. my rides generally or whatnot. I'm like, I've never been mad enough to punch my own vehicle. No, me neither. I, I never punched it in the vehicle. Man, we yeah. had friends that just, had oh, beat, just their... beat the hell out of them. Like, well, now <laughs> your hand hurts, your vehicle screwed up, and you don't have a woman. Like, I don't know. It seems like that was a poor plan. <laughs> I had a buddy of mine who punched his pulling tractor one time down at the hood. I got mad at mine one time, and I did spit on the hood. Yeah. My, my old tractor. I spit on the hood one time. He's like, man, I can't believe you did that. That's so disrespectful. I'm like, you just punched yours and put a dent in it. <laughs> I spit on mine and wiped it off. I'm like, I don't see the similarity yeah, there, but okay. Exactly. Yeah. I, I guess each their own. Yeah. But, like, that's totally different. I'm like, he's like, I was mad. I punched a dent. I'm like, I was mad too. I spit on it. Right. Wiped it off. Call it a day. Yeah. Never did punch it. Was never nope. that mad at it. Yeah. Them old days are, they're gone. That's for sure. So. 
Well, what do you think? Shall yeah, we wrap this one up? Yeah, we better wrap it up. Yeah. It's probably, what, an hour into this? Been yeah, a while. I'd say so, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, as always, we've... Uh, full circle. Pretty much come full circle. Yep. We never let you down in that aspect. Nope, nope. Try to follow us. <laughs> We're all over the board. That's right. So, Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next time.